Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Connor and I'll be your host for today's video. Excitingly, today we have the next installment of our mini series, The Financial Wellbeing Checklist. And this time we're talking about tax. Regardless of your opinions about taxation, and believe me, I've seen some really weird ones, it is a part of our life here in Australia, and it's in our own best interest to make sure that we have at least a basic understanding of how the system works, so that we actually know where our money's going. And strangely enough, still to this day, as far as I'm aware, taxation still isn't taught in schools, and I myself, an applied finance graduate and self-proclaimed finance nerd, didn't really have it spelled out for me until fairly recently. And this is a serious problem. So in this video, we're going to put some of the most common tax misunderstandings to rest and explain in detail what you need to know about taxation in Australia. And as those of you who are familiar with the channel will know, I love examples. So best believe we're going to have examples to run through everything that we talk about. Now, just before we get into the bulk of the video, if any of you guys find any value whatsoever in this sort of content and appreciate what Alan and I do here, could you please just take the time to gently tap the like button? It really does help us out and helps our content be pushed to a larger audience, which in turn obviously helps us grow as well. Now that that's done, let's jump into it. The first thing to note is that Australia has a progressive tax rate, which basically means that the more you earn, the more you pay in tax. This point alone is where so many Australians start to get confused, so let's see if we can help that. Because the percentage of tax you pay per dollar increases progressively through each of the tax brackets, some people believe that moving slightly into the next tax bracket, the higher tax bracket, could mean that you actually have less take home pay. And this is completely wrong. I kid you not, I've actually heard people questioning whether they would like to have an increase in their income in the form of a raise, for example, because they're worried it could mean they actually have less take home pay at the end of the day. Now, to be fair, a lot of people make this mistake and I can understand why. As an individual Australian resident, there are actually five income tax brackets, which say for all income between zero and 18,200, there's a 0% tax which means you don't pay anything. <laughs> then between $18,201 and $45,000, there's a 19% tax rate. Between $45,001 and $120,000, there's a 32.5% tax rate. Then for between $120,001 and, and $180,000, there's a 37% tax rate. And finally, for 180,001 and above, there's a 45% tax rate. So where many people get confused is they think, whichever bracket my taxable income falls within, the respective percentage is what I have to pay on my entire taxable income. So for example, someone who has a taxable income of $125,000, as a mistake may see that 37% tax rate and think that 37% of that entire income is what they have to pay in tax, which in this case would be $46,250, leaving them with just $78,750. And with this incorrect logic, it's easy to see how someone who is about to move slightly into the next tax bracket might be a bit hesitant to do so. So for example, let's say someone who had this understanding of tax was currently earning $120,000 a year. They would be just in the 32.5% tax bracket. And so with their reasoning, they would be thinking they had to pay $39,000 in tax, which is 30. 2.5% of 120,000, which would mean that their take home pay would be $81,000 a year. But if they were offered a $1,000 per year raise, bumping up their taxable income to $121,000, that would move them into the 37% tax bracket. So with their incorrect reasoning, they would be thinking, okay, well now I have to pay $44,770 in tax and my income now drops to 76,230. 
I'm not gonna take the extra $1,000. But this is completely wrong. To help me explain how tax actually works, the ATO, funnily enough, have a really helpful page with a table that everyone should be very familiar with. Now, just by looking at this table, some of you may know where I'm going with this and actually starting to see how it works, but I'll go through it in detail. So each of the brackets and their respective tax rate only refers to the amount of money that is earned between those values. So what I mean by this is, for example, say you had an income of $200,000 a year. Some of you may look at the table and go, okay, well the last tax bracket applies because it says there over $180,000 is the 45% tax bracket. However, this doesn't mean that the entire $200,000 is taxed at 45%. Think about it like this. You have your entire taxable income, in this case, $200,000. A portion of that, the first 18,200, falls into the first bracket, which means you don't pay any tax on it. The next portion, which would be between $18,201 and $45,000, that alone is taxed at 19%. So how much would that be? Take $45,000, subtract 18,200, because that portion of the money we didn't have to pay anything on, and you're given 26,800. And it's that amount alone which you pay 19% on. So then if we multiply that by 0.19 or get 19% of the amount, you'll see there it's $5,092. Let's go over to the next section. So we have from $45,001 up until $120,000. For this section, there's another $75,000 that needs to be paid. That's just $120,000 minus $45,000. Take a look at the table, it says for that amount, we have to pay 32.5% tax. So we take the 75,000, multiply it by 0.325 or get 32.5% of it, and we're given 24,375. So then we move on to the next portion of the money between 120,000 and 180,000. So for this bracket, there's $60,000, it's 37%, do the calculation again, and that's $22,200. And for our example, in this final section, because our hypothetical person has a taxable income of $200,000, there's only $20,000 in that final section. So only $20,000 is being taxed at 45%. But regardless, we'll do the calculation and we get an additional $9,000 that needs to be paid. So our hypothetical example here would have a tax bill of $60,667. Now, just remember that I haven't included the Medicare levy or Medicare levy surcharge in these calculations, just to keep it simple. If you have any questions about that, just write a comment in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to explain. Now, just to make sure that you definitely get it, we'll go over one more example. Let's say in this case, our hypothetical Australian has a taxable income of $60,000. Again, if we split that income into the sections, for the first section, the first $18,200, there's nothing to be paid. For the second section, just like the previous example, that second section, which is between $18,200 and $45,000, is $26,800, and that amount is taxed at 19%, which comes to $5,092. For the third section, because our taxable income is $60,000, there's only $15,000 we need to account for. And if that $15,000 is taxed at 32.5%, then that's an additional $4,875 that we need to add to the tax bill, bringing the total, not including the Medicare levy, to $9,967. Now, hopefully that was clear and you can use these techniques to calculate how much you're supposed to be paying in tax. Now, just to be sure that you're getting the calculations correct, I'll put a pay calculator link in the description below. If you use that, you can just put in the amount and it does the calculations for you. And although just popping in a number on that website is much quicker than going through each of those calculations, just as we did before with our examples, I think it's really important to know what's happening behind the scenes so that 
that you really understand how the system actually works. Now, I just want to reiterate these examples were very basic examples and didn't account for the multitude of factors that can impact your taxable income and the amount of tax you have to pay each year. So just like I myself do, I would recommend that when you do have any questions about tax in your specific circumstance, it's always best to go directly to a professional because they'll be able to take your entire situation into account and give you the best advice. I'll also put a couple of our previous videos on tax in the description below. Alan did a video earlier this year about some key tax deductions that may be able to assist you in getting a larger tax return next year. And my video is about one of the best ways to reduce your tax bill here in Australia as an investor. Other than that, I really hope you did enjoy this video. If you did and you would like to see more videos like it, definitely consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That'll make sure that you're the first to know when any of our new content comes out. But if you didn't wanna wait until then, here's a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, and this is our latest video. Hopefully one of those appeals to you, but if not, I'll see you in the next one.